You know, hell is God's righteous judgment. It's not, it's not Satan's headquarters. You know, because a lot of people have this idea that, you know, Satan is like the God of hell. He's like the anti-God that is reigning and ruling in hell and God reigns and rules in heaven. So no, the, the God of the Bible is not the God of Greek mythology where you've got, you know, is it Hades in hell and then you've got Zeus in heaven and they're, they're constantly enemies and they're equal footing. No, Satan is a created creature of God and one day he'll be cast to hell. So, he, so it's not that Satan is reigning in hell. Satan is not the God of hell. And it was interesting that um, Brother Kevin, I saw him uh, uh, comment on a, on a Facebook post saying, you know, when people say, oh, you know, they'll say like the NIV is straight out of the pits of hell. Or they'll say like, oh, this doctrine is out of the pits of hell. And Kevin commented saying, you know, that doesn't make sense to me because hell is the place where God judges righteously and punishes sin. It's not Satan's headquarters where he's like sending out his minions from there. Do you know what I mean? So nothing comes out of the pits of hell. Things go to get punished in the pits of hell. Do you know what I mean? So this, this saying doesn't make sense because we have this idea that there's like these hellish minions that are like coming out of hell that Satan is sending. No, no, it doesn't, I don't think it works that way. So out of the pits of hell um, doesn't make sense in, in that sense where it's like Satan's minions being sent. I guess you could say out of the pits of hell, meaning things get sent there to be punished and there, there are evil things in that place. Um, and the thing is, the reason why something can't come out of the pits of hell because only Jesus has the keys of death and hell. So things can, only, can, things can only come out of hell if Jesus allows it to come out of, allows it to come out of hell. Look at what it says here in Revelation 1.18. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forever, forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and death. I wanted to show you this verse just in light of that, Matthew 16, 18. Because, you know, this is, this is a verse that I think maybe I've misunderstood and I've just, I was just rethinking this. I just wanted to share this thought with you. But, you know, we, we look at this verse when we talk about church and we say in verse 18, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let me just read a, a bit further up here for you, just to get it in context. Verse 13, When Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah. Or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now I just want you to keep that verse in, in, in mind um, when we read the next couple of verses. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So what is the it referring to? The fact that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he says, you know, it's not, flesh and blood didn't reveal it to you, Simon, but my Father in heaven, the fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is the Christ. And then it says here in verse 18, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So a lot of people, especially the Catholics, try and take this verse to say that Peter is the rock on which the church is built. But another way that you can understand this passage is the rock is Christ. The fact that thou art Christ, the son of the living God, that's the rock that Jesus Christ is going to build his church on. So he's going to build it on himself. And that's what the truth is. That's what the, the church is built on. And look in verse 19, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, you know how we were talking about, you know, things coming out of the pit of hell, and, you know, I, I think sometimes we, we may misunderstand this verse, verse 18, where it says, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And we think that, you know, well, the church is going to storm the gates of hell because you've got the armies of hell, and then you've got the armies of God, and we, there's this fight between hell and between um, us. But when you think about it, how does that make sense? Why would we storm the gates of hell? Because why, why would we be like running and charging into hell? Because isn't hell the place where God sends people to get punished? And then the gates, you know, they say the gates are defensive, right? So if hell has gates, why are believers charging into hell? 
You know, it doesn't make sense, right? So I, I was just thinking about this verse and I was thinking, it says, on this, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I think I've always understood this verse as the it being the church. He's saying the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. But what if, what if it's the it is the rock? And it's saying, you know, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the rock. Why? Because Jesus Christ went to hell, right? And he, and he paid for our sins and he got the keys of death and hell. And it's saying the gates couldn't keep him in because he can open those gates and get out. So I'm just wondering whether that's another explanation to that verse because it makes more sense to me that you know, the it is referring to the rock and the fact that Jesus Christ cannot be kept in hell. But if somebody goes to hell, they can't get out because nothing else can get past those gates. Only Jesus Christ can let somebody out of those gates. But Jesus Christ in Revelation 1.18 has the, the keys of death and of hell. So the gates of hell won't re prevail against it, the rock. Um, <clears throat> and that's how we know we have hope from hell because he owns um, the keys. And I just thought it was interesting that it talks about the gates of hell not prevailing against it, which, which could be the rock. And then verse 19 talks about more keys, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So not only does Jesus have the keys of death and of hell, but he also has the keys of the kingdom of heaven because he's the owner of all those places. So hell is God's righteous judgment. It's not Satan's headquarters. So another verse um, that I thought about in Matthew 23 where we get this idea of like of these uh, the hell's minions. Um, it says here in uh, Matthew 23, it says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. So just keep that in mind. And then it's in verse 15, it says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte or a convert, and when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. So I was just thinking, when I was thinking about this whole hell's minions and everything, I thought of this verse and I'm thinking, what about the child of hell in Matthew 23? But then is it like a, a hell's minions child of hell? Or is it just saying that in verse 14, you for a pretense make long prayer, therefore you shall receive the greater condemnation, the greater damnation. So they're a child of hell in the sense that they're going to be condemned to hell. And it's saying that you compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he's made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourself. Meaning that they, they create this convert, and now he's even, he's even worthy of twofold the damnation that they're worthy of. Not that they are somehow sent from hell um, and are one of, um, you know, it's meaning from hell. Anyway, just, just a thought there, just to, to be consistent with um, this whole idea that hell is not uh, Satan's headquarters. Um, and another verse I just wanted to show you in regard to this topic as well. Um, there's, there's, one, there's one thing I can't explain yet. Maybe you guys can in, in the context of, of this understanding. But, you know, the beast in Revelation 17 comes out of the bottomless pit. But I'm not 100% sure what that beast is yet. So maybe, Kevin, you might know. But I just wanted to show you this verse in Revelation 9 because in Revelation 9 we do see um, creatures coming out of hell, right? So this idea of uh, these hell's minions, right? But look at what these creatures do. It says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. <laughs> so, you know, I guess I, I would say that that's the key given from Jesus Christ to this angel. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. foreheads. So this is one of the judgments of God in uh, Revelation. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And it goes on to, to describe these, uh, these creatures that come out of the bottomless pit, which we believe is, uh, is, is hell. 
But the point I just want to make here just supports that point that, you know, hell is God's judgment. It's not Satan's headquarters. Satan is not sending out these minions from hell. Who is? God sent them out. Right? So God opened up hell and allowed the creatures from hell to come onto the earth to torment the men on the earth as a punishment. And it's almost like there's a period here where on earth it's like hell, where people want to die. Look at what it says here. It says, And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. That's what hell is going to be like. Hell is going to be a place where people want to die, where they want it to be over. They want it to stop, but it won't. It just goes on forever and ever and ever. Men shall seek death and shall not find it. They'll desire to die, but death will flee from them. So I just thought it was interesting there that these, these creatures coming out of hell are not sent by Satan, but these creatures coming out from hell are sent by God and are actually a judgment of God on unbelievers. Because Satan, Satan has not even gone to hell yet. Um, I just want to show you this verse in Matthew 25, 41. Um, the story of the king dividing the sheep from the goats. He says here in verse 41, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So you see, hell is not only a place where unbelievers are punished, but it was originally created to punish Satan and his demons. So Satan does not rule in hell because he's also going to be going there to be punished as well. Um, it's not a, a place that he rules from. Isaiah 14. This is a, a parable about, about the, the king of Babylon um, that we can apply to Satan. It says here in Isaiah 14, 9, Hell from beneath. So again, hell is beneath us in the center of the earth. Is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave and the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee and the worm covered, worms cover thee. So the people in hell are seeing Satan cast into hell and thinking, you've become like one of us? Like you've, you've come to hell as well to be punished? And isn't it funny how it says thy pomp, so the, the pride of Satan is brought down to the grave and the noise of thy vials. So it shows here that Satan is, a, is this musical creature, isn't he? Um, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? So the reason why we believe that this passage is not just talking about a physical person, but it's actually talking about Satan as well, is because no man has fallen from heaven. So it talks about here something falling from heaven. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake the kingdoms? So Satan has not even yet gone to hell. One day he's going to be cast out of heaven. He hasn't even been cast out of heaven yet. That happens, I believe, later, um, just before the start of the tribulation. There's a war in heaven, and then basically Satan is cast to the earth, and then that's what um, begins the tribulation. But um, so Satan has not yet gone to hell. Satan is, will be cast into hell and, the, and hell is prepared for the devil and his angels. Um, and again, we'll just read here in Revelation 20. This is where we actually read where Satan is cast into hell. It says here in Revelation 20, And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. 
and after that he must be loosed a little season. So then he... Um, Uh, where is it here? Verse 7. We see here, when the thousand years are expired, so after the millennial reign, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And here we go. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So we read here in Revelation 20 where Satan is bound and cast into hell for a thousand years in the bottomless pit in the center of the earth. And then later on, he is loosed from his prison to deceive the nations and then he is cast into outer darkness into the lake of fire which I believe is also called hell. We'll get to that in a second. So Satan, again, is not reigning in hell. He one day will be cast into hell. And then we read this here. 